So this is my local elevated station here in Fishtown. And this is the local elevated station by my parents' house in Queens. So that last bit was a song testing the wall for lead paint and it coming back positive. Here's another positive lead paint test we took elsewhere in the station. Red, red. Okay, yeah, we got lead. Yeah. All right, that's conclusive. It's not like Burke's is in pristine condition, but it's clearly in much better shape. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, on first glance, you might be thinking, well, it's obvious. It's just an older station. And, well, you're technically correct. Burke's was built along with the rest of the Frankfurt L in 1922. 82nd Street was built with most of the Flushing L a whole five years earlier in 1917. Okay, so not that big a difference in age. Well, maybe Burke's was just renovated more recently. Once again, you are correct. The Flushing L was supposedly rebuilt from 1985 to 1989. The Frankfurt L reconstruction began in 1988. All right, time to talk about history. Both of these elevated lines date back to an era when the US was rapidly building public transit systems. At the time, these lines were run by private companies that ran on shoestring budgets. The IRT and BMT in New York, and the PRT in Philly. In New York, the city made it illegal for the IRT and BMT subway companies to raise the fare from the five cents that had been set decades early. There was basically no budget for maintenance. During the Depression, the financial situation worsened, and the city focused its transit budget on the new city-operated IND subway system. Similarly, in Philadelphia, funding went mainly to the construction of the new Broad Street subway. So bad were the finances of the IRT and BMT that in 1940, the city bought them out. Also in 1940, PRT was reorganized into another private company, PTC. However, with the war, funding for public programs back home remained limited. In the post-war era, the U.S. began to focus on suburban development for the new, mostly white, middle class. Elves were seen as an obsolete relic of a bygone era, eyesores that hurt property values in crowded, impoverished, slum-filled cities. The automobile was hailed as the future of transportation. Streets were laid out in arts and curves to conform to the natural landscape, providing pleasant vistas for every home. Principal street arteries were planned to carry traffic easily and quickly to and from a smart, modern shopping center. As white flight occurred, and anyone who had the money to leave the city did, the tax base disappeared, and cities went into serious decline. Philadelphia's population peaked at over 2 million people on the 1950 census. It still hasn't recovered. SEPTA finally took over Philly's transit system for PTC in 1964. By the 80s, the situation had reached a crisis in both cities. In 1981, the MTA released the report of the 69 nice, most deteriorated stations in the system. Not nice. 82nd Street, along with eight other stations on the Flushing Line, were on the list. Some of the pillars supporting the L were so unstable that trains would not run on extremely windy days. Small pieces of the L were falling off when trains passed overhead. So beginning in 1985, the MTA began a four and a half year reconstruction process to fix the flushing line. The scope of the work performed was very basic. Parts of structure that needed to be replaced were, but nothing was drastically changed. The situation in Philly was not much better. With decades of neglect, the old Frankfurt L was also in rough shape. Reconstruction began in 1989, 
and was far more extensive. It was not completed until the year 2000. The original concrete track bed filled with ballast was replaced with a new one where tracks were fixed directly to the concrete. This is in contrast to New York where wooden track ties were fixed directly to steel girders open to the street below. Stations were completely rebuilt from the ground up and were also made ADA compliant with tactile platform edge strips and elevators. Meanwhile in New York, the flushing line continued to be neglected. The 7 train alone sees more riders than all of SEPTA combined. Heavy ridership meant constant wear and tear on the structure whose rebuilt had been half-assed, and 30 trains an hour per direction during rush hour definitely helped wear down the structure. Meanwhile, throughout the city, other L's that had also been renovated in the 80s were given overhauls again. But it wasn't all rosy in Philly either. Shortly after the rebuild was completed in 1997, the new concrete track bed began cracking and spalling. Small pieces of concrete were breaking off and falling onto the street below. This was due to a flaw in the design of the structure. In 2009, SEPTA sued the engineering firms responsible for this and also contracted engineering firm WJE to fix the structure. Looking at their website, I was able to determine that the repair was completed successfully, but I don't know when. Now that that's fixed, my only real complaints is that the structure is way too loud. Back in Queens, things were reaching a crisis. In 2015, the MTA surveyed all 472 subway stations to assess the state of repair. Troublingly, of the 30 stations in worst shape, where more than 50% of station components were deemed structurally deficient, six were on the 7 train, including the worst station in the entire system, 52nd Street. The 7 was in line with the most structurally deficient components. The other five stations were 61st Street, 69th Street, 103rd Street, 111th Street, and oh, would you look at that, what a surprise, 82nd Street. As part of the 2015 capital plan, these stations would get renovated beginning in 2020. However, this was postponed. In May 2017, District 9 International Union of Painters and Allied Trades discovered that the paint peeling from the structure rebuilt a decade after lead paint was made illegal, somehow contained 40 times the legal limit of lead. With all of the food vendors on the street below, this was a public health crisis. Soon after, local business owners and residents filed a class action lawsuit arguing that the MTA has wrongfully, knowingly, deliberately, intentionally, and as a matter of policy, permitted a dangerous condition to exist and to continue to exist. By December, the MTA announced plans to remediate and repaint the L. In early 2018, Seven Express service had to be suspended for several weeks to perform an emergency repair of the express track at Woodside. Later that year, the MTA began the two-year process of remediating the structure of lead paint as well as replacing the crumbling concrete footings. This repainting project, however, did not touch the stations. And then, pieces started falling from the structure with alarming frequency. Luckily, nobody was ever hit, though some cars were seriously damaged. A few pieces came very close, including a large piece that dramatically pierced through someone's windshield while he was driving. Luckily, he was uninjured. Netting was put up along the line to catch the debris, and structural repairs were added to the repainting project. Again, the stations were untouched. And that brings us to now, May 2023. Starting next week, the Manhattan-bound platform of 82nd Street will be closed as 82nd Street will be one of the first two of several stations on the Flushing L to get rebuilt. Let's see if they actually do a good job of it this time.